Hiya, Paul. Hello. You know, that countdown there, I mean, it's it's all very dramatic, but that weird little squelch at the end. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. For those who don't know, we're using Squadcast to record this, and it has a countdown, which makes yeah. you feel like, oh, important telly, but it's annoying waiting for 10 seconds to start. <laughs> it is, yeah. Like a dramatic pause to get your thoughts. Anyway, hello. Welcome to the Meat Puppets. Episode 11, Paul. 11? Which almost didn't happen. No. So... Turn it up to uh, 11. We made 11 episodes. Yeah. So um, I was going to say, you know, I'm currently in my loft um, and I was going to do our somewhere between and somewhere between, but I really haven't had time because there's been some stuff happening this weekend. No. Oh, yeah. Don't bet your business on AI because it might not exist. <laughs> Just so you know, so it's Tuesday morning at 11.08, yeah. Tuesday the 21st. Yeah. Um, And so we... <laughs> Let's start on Friday. This all started going mental on Friday. Yeah. Um, I've just jumped straight into it. I don't know. Just jump straight into it. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about and yeah. there's a lot so, to break down. Okay. I, I do want to say that by 11.18, this all might be different. So certainly by the time you, you, know, you listen to it, it's probably got nothing to do with anything that's gone on. Well, this goes out tonight. So tonight, tomorrow. Yeah. So um, depending when you listen to it, there, there might not be any AI or there might not be any humanity. <laughs> yeah. True fact. Anyway, so Friday morning, um, I was off doing some, let's say, normal old work. And uh, GPTs had just been launched. So that is uh, personalized chat GPTs that you can own and that you can charge people to access. Yep. So everyone was talking about this. And Sam Altman from OpenAI had announced this last week. Yep, and we um, kind of had a an emer- not an emergency meeting, but a bit of a rushed meeting saying we should try and capitalise on this. Yeah, and we swiftly didn't. had uh, our web developer go off on a spike yep. to uh, <clears throat> find all the necessary things that we might need, and then we started happily building uh, GPTs, didn't we? Yeah, and then we had a little bit of a gambling session on Friday morning. We did. It turned out that domains might be important for GPTs. Yes, so we went and. Bought a few in a little bit of... I think it'd be a lie to say it wasn't a gamble. It wasn't a gamble. UK. It was a speculation. Yeah. That's the so, that's the right term, isn't it? Yeah. So we do own a few GPT domains. Uh, do. This isn't an advert for that, but, <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're looking for a GPT domain, do get in touch. And you're in finance, healthcare, and education. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we might have a domain We might have a domain you. just for you, yeah. <laughs> and just to give that in context, I'm going to make up some figures, but it was this crazy amount because I know we went looking. Yeah. And like fin- gptfinance.com was available for something like $295,000. Yeah. So we bought gptfinance.co.uk for a tenner. Hey! <laughs> Welcome to Little Britain. <laughs> uh, yeah, some anyway. of them were outrageous. 70,000, 80,000. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then, cut to a few hours later uh, on Friday afternoon. And so, I was saying before, Sam Altman, you know, the open AI guy. Well, it turns out Sam Altman is no longer the OpenAI guy, or he might be. Well, yeah, I don't know. But basically, the board of OpenAI got together <laughs> and decided they were going to fire the one AI person that virtually everyone in the world knows. Yes. Which is Sam Altman. Yep. <clears throat> and everybody's feeds exploded with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing they to put in the statement said he was fired because he was not consistently candid in his communications with the board, yeah. hindering its ability to exercise its responsibilities. Now, that makes me worry. Yeah. 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 What was he not consistently candid about? <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, he is, he is the, the ethical AI guy, right? Well, kind of. He's like, it's, it's weird because uh, OpenAI have a mission that, uh, that AI should be for everybody. Yes. And they, they, you know, they were the first people to release, you know, GPT three point five back in October, I think it was last year, yeah. when all this madness started. Yeah. And a, a reading between the lines, apparently back then there was a load of kickoff going, you shouldn't have released this to the world. We don't know what it is. Yeah. And we mentioned the uh, Chat GPTs, the um, event OpenAI had last uh, last week. Was that just last week? Yeah. That was just last week. My yeah. God. <clears throat> anyway, just last week where they announced the GPT store. And 
a lot of people are thinking it's in it's in relation to this. I've read so many conspiracy theories over the weekend. So one conspiracy <laughs> theory is that um, he was trying to cut NVIDIA out of the loop and doing a deal with uh, a load of rich people to make a new AI chip so they didn't have to use NVIDIA chips anymore. But right. I hadn't told the board about that. No. There was another conspiracy theory about how he'd been he'd been personally investing in other stuff. Right. Uh, one one interesting thing, which a lot of people don't know, is so as the CEO, he has no shares in OpenAI, That's zero. Set up. Uh, and he did say on his Twitter, "Let them come after me for all my shares." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, then the saga continued. So there's another guy called Greg Brockman, uh, who is high up at AI, and he was on the board, and he was he was dismissed from the board as well. But they said he's he's essential to the running of open ai so we're not going to sack him he then promptly tweeted i quit yeah <clears throat> and then left and uh, a lady called mira was appointed as an in- interim ceo <laughs> but the main thing here is then all the staff then started kicking off yeah and there was a letter release wasn't there well that's that's the latest bit the letter Oh, is it? Oh, sorry, yeah, I thought yeah, that's that was the... in... Right, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. so that this is the latest... Right, as you were, as you were, as you were. Yeah. So, so then, so the staff kind of de- demanded that Altman come back and the board to be sacked. So, then, cut to, I think it's Sunday morning, Sam Altman tweets a picture of himself wearing a guest pass in the OpenAI lobby with something along the lines of, uh, this is the first and the last time I'll be wearing one of these. <laughs> So then everyone was like, oh, Sam Altman's coming back because he's been sacked for a day and a half. <laughs> yeah. And the board are going. But then apparently he wanted the board to be sacked. Sam said, I'll come back, but I want the board to be sacked. And this is all speculation, by the way. Yeah. And I want a public apology saying that I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> wow. So, so then it was like, oh, right, well, Sam's going back and the board are going back. Um, and I should mention at this point... Uh, one of the other founders of OpenAI and is like the main science guy there, a guy called Ilias. Mm-hmm. He was on the board and he actually voted for Sam to be sacked. So then he comes out and says, oh, I got it wrong. Sam shouldn't have been sacked. I'm sorry. Yeah. So then you think, okay, Sam's going back. But then Monday. Yeah. So Greg Brockman and Sam Altman. So Greg who quit, Sam who was fired were then hired by Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and then for those who don't know, Microsoft have a 49% stake in OpenAI yeah. and are the guys who are giving them all the compute, helping them develop really quick. So they're massively invested in OpenAI. Yeah. And I should also say that Microsoft, even though they're a 49% shareholder, were only told that Sam had been fired one minute before they released the press release. Wow. So they were said to be livid about it. So Good. Sam Altman and Greg Brockman are going to head up a new advanced AI research group. At Microsoft. At, at Microsoft. Yeah. And Microsoft right. owned 50%, 49% of uh, OpenAI. Open AI. And others, actually. <laughs> yeah, and others. Um, I do have to say, Microsoft are playing a blinder at the moment. Absolute uh, blinder. Do I, I think <laughs> yeah. they own everything. Yeah. <laughs> They've got the games industry wrapped up. It's just, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm going to have to start using Bing anyway. <laughs> uh, when you say you're going to start using Bing, you're talking about the browser, right? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What else is Bing? <laughs> I don't know. Don't you know? You no, know, I don't. Uh, you're going to have to right, tell me. Th- well, this might have to be cut out, but you know, um, Friends... Yeah. Uh, Chandler, who died. Chandler Bing, yeah. Yeah, who died recently. He was addicted to certain stuff, wasn't he? Right. So there was uh, a, oh, uh, a slang Bing. term. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave that in. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> some, um, some people of a certain generation would have had a little titter to that, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, Never heard get, that in my life. Before. Haven't you? Yeah, no. no. Getting your back for tool. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough yeah fair enough sam altman ai tool no anyway <laughs> moving on so then open ai come out and goes right we've appointed emmett Shear as the new interim ceo so mira is gone so she was interim ceo for a day yeah would you put that on your cv or would you put that on linkedin <laughs> it's kind of like, like it's previous like... roles <laughs> previous roles timing job 
48 it hours. Makes, it makes Liz <laughs> Truss look like she was in office for ages. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cabbage wasn't even out of the fridge. Yeah. Anyway. So Emmett Shear. Have I said his name right? Yeah. Emmett Shear. So he's for a former, I think he's a founder of Twitch. I know he's involved with Twitch, but he's generally known as a, a tech optimist. Um, Do you want to hear his tech optimism? Yeah. Of Here course. we go. So this is, I don't know when this was recorded, but this is quite, uh, uh, looking at him, it looks like a while ago, but it's his view of um, AI. I have a very specific concern about AI. We built an intelligence. It's kind of amazing, actually. It may not be the smartest intelligence, but it is unintelligence. It can solve problems and make arbitrary plans. At some point, as it gets better, the kinds of problems it will be able to solve will include programming, chip design, material science, power production, all of the things you would need to design an artificial intelligence. At that point, you will be able to point the thing we've built back at itself. And this will happen in before you get that point with humans in the loop. It already is happening with humans in the loop, but that loop will get tighter and tighter and tighter and faster and faster and faster until it can fully self-improve itself, at which point it will get very fast, very quickly. And that kind of intelligence is just an intrinsically very dangerous thing because intelligence is power. Human beings are the dominant form of life on this planet pretty much entirely because we are smarter than the other creatures. Like my P doom, my probability of doom is like my bid ask spread and that's pretty high because I have a lot of uncertainty, but I would say it's like between five and 50. Should cause you to shit your pants. But it's human level <laughs> extinction, I think. Yeah, yeah, but it's, not, it's not just human level extinction. It's such, extincting humans is bad enough. It's like potential destruction of all value in the light cone. Here I am being the guy who's like, the techno optimist, and I am like, no, 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 the AI thing, though, th this thing, though, actually, maybe, maybe a problem. Yeah. Wow. Ah. <laughs> Very sciencey guy. Light cones and P doom. What? The yeah. Hell? Yeah. I, I mean, know. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. so he's currently the new interim uh, uh, CEO at OpenAI. Hmm. So, you know, so maybe, maybe it's over ethics. Anyway. Yeah. There's a then good that, but, well, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I am quite glad that he's in charge. <laughs> Because <laughs> if he's uh, well, it depends whether he. I mean, he might be serious and about all of what he, what he what we just heard him say. But uh, will he put it into business practice? I hope so. <laughs> so then Monday, so yesterday evening, ninety five percent. Bear in mind, this is after Altman and Brockman have been welcomed into Microsoft. And, you know, they've kind of said, yeah, thanks, I'm going to Microsoft. So they confirmed it. So it was like a done deal thing. So then Monday, 95% of OpenAI staff demand the sacking of the board and the return of Altman and Brockman or else they will quit and go and work for Brockman and Altman at Microsoft. Wow. So is 95% everyone except the board who, <laughs> who wanted him sacked. Is that right? <laughs> he may as well just say 100% because... Surely, I mean, you like to say, everyone's been saying open AI is nothing without its people. That's what they've all been tweeting. So I think that's kind of a threat to the board. Yeah. But it, it, it seems to me that Microsoft might have just executed a takeover of open AI for nothing. And then mm. open AI are just left with the chat GPT brand, which don't get me wrong, is a recognizable brand. But mm. it seems like that's all they're left with. And bear in mind, they had a, well, oh, I think it was an 80 to $90 billion valuation. Yeah. I'm sure that doesn't exist anymore. Mm, I wonder. Can we see the stock price anyway? Oh, they're not. Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> no, it, they're not listed yet. Are no. they? I'm just looking at Twitter just to see if anything else has come up. Uh, no, no. So anyway, that was some news this weekend. And I tell you what was a little bit disappointing about it all. So I thought we were there in this AI bubble, bubble being all yeah. kind of special and like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, we're doing AI stuff. No, oh, you probably don't know about it. <laughs> and switched on the six o'clock news. Yeah. It's a lead story. No. There you go. Oh, I was proper disappointed. I shouldn't be because it means we're in the right place. But my missus actually turned around to me and went, see, you're not special. Everyone knows about AI. <laughs> <laughs> nice and supportive. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. There has been some other big news, Paul, today. Yeah. 
I, I, it's a bit nasty, this, but it's World Television Day today. Is it? Yes. Is it? <clears throat> it is World Television Today, established in 1996. Right. Well, it's I'm sorry, celebrate... Martin. We're going to have to cut this podcast short. I'm going to watch Good Morning Britain. Oh, no, it's probably finished by now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's what he recommends you do on World Television Day. Is it? Yeah. Now, yeah. I've done that all bright and breezy, yeah. but there's a but here. Um, I lo- went onto my LinkedIn feed this morning um, just to see if anybody else had decided to write something about OpenAI. And because of the industry we come from, so traditional TV, media, adverts, um, my entire feed is full of Uh, a test card with the words off air written on it. Mm. And I'll just read this out. So today is World Television Day, Tuesday the 21st of November. Please be aware of the off air nightmare. UK unscripted TV has ground to a halt. The commissioning downturn means no work for up to 80% of TV workers. Mm. With a severe loss of income, the industry is experiencing a huge brain drain as highly skilled and experienced workers leave the industry to keep food on the table. We cannot allow this to happen. We are calling upon networks, channels, and the DCMS, Department of Culture, Media, and Sport, to help find a solution before it's too late. Please like and share to spread the world word to save our industry. Thank you. Hashtag off air nightmare. Right. Well, we 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 did predict this coming for, for probably the last decade. <laughs> yeah, I would say as weirdly, I was talking with a mutual friend just before we started recording this. Yeah, and um, I think it's probably banging on banging on about it for the, about the past eight years mm. and i know people in tv or say traditional media world have been having trouble and i've been putting a lot of it down to the fact of the writers and actors strike which means our studios are dark yeah but this is unscripted so this is things like you know cash in the attic <laughs> repair shop yeah i don't even know what's on anymore if i'm honest no and i think that's the point so I can see people are having a hard time and, you know, maybe I don't think this is down to AI that this is happening. I think this is probably just down to the internet in general and people's attention being elsewhere. Yeah. But I suppose it feels like we're making the right move. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe our previously un- a really successful business would have been no longer successful by now. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. We, we but anyway, a lot, that's a lot of that kind of thing though, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. So that is uh, the big news of the day. N- unfortunately, not World Television Day. Yeah. Uh, open AI. And it's not finished, I don't think. Mm. I think it's going to carry on and on and on. And yeah. Can- what, what were you saying just before we came on, Paul? You were talking about, I hope someone doesn't do something super malicious. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. It was just a little bit worrying because everyone's sort of. You know, everyone's very conscious of AI, like um, Mr. Twitch just told us, <clears throat> and everybody's talking about the ethics of it and, you know, how dangerous it can be and it needs to be a force for positivity. But yeah. um, just how volatile it all is at the moment, it wouldn't come as a massive shock if somebody did something a bit malicious who's in charge of this AI, you know, who's who's looking after it and, yeah, with... Uh, yeah, the volatility of all the hirings and firings and everything, it it's, um, seems difficult to regulate in that kind of landscape, no? Yeah. Um, can yeah. I give you one more conspiracy theory? Yeah. So one of the other board members, I've lost the Twitter feed now because I've searched for OpenAI instead. Ah. But this was another, this was another um, a conspiracy theory, which may be true. Yeah. Is that, so one of the other board members owns a start up on an app called Po. Right. But and Po. P O. P O E, I think. P O E, all right. Like Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, weirdly. Yeah. And they just released a product to help you monetize personalized chatbots. Right. <laughs> just before um the um open AI day where they announced the GPT store. No oh, wow. Yeah. Well, we're feeling so, that. We've mentioned it, I think, every episode. It moves so quickly. It's too quick. But now, weirdly, life's imitating AI. Because talk about like boardroom changes out of the blue, everything changing every five minutes. Can't even trust what's happening with the companies. Yeah. And the thing that scared me yeah. was I reckon this involves maybe 30 people. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th- 30 people are just changing everything. Yeah. And like Sam Altman's only 38. I know. <laughs> he's 38. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe if I was 25, I'd go, God, he's well old. He's 38. <laughs> but he's 38. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I asked ChatGPT to go browse Bing and tell me about the sacking of Sam, Sam Altman. Yeah. Um, and then it gave me a rundown, pretty much of everything of what you just said. And then uh, I asked it, well, what will happen next? Oh, <laughs> do, you wanna, do you wanna know what chat GPT thinks will happen next? It does give me some caveats. It's saying it's a it's a um well, predicting the exact outcome of the situation at OpenAI following Sam Altman's firing is challenging as it involves complex dynamics within the company and its relationship with major stakeholders like Microsoft. Yeah. It says, however, a few potential scenarios could unfold. Leadership and organizational changes. Yeah, we kind of get that. No, don't need to describe that. Yep. Negotiations for Altman's return. It could lead to a resolution of the current conflict. Uh, formation of a new AI subsidiary at Microsoft. So we know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> Impact on open AI's projects and partnerships. This might affect the development and deployment of their new AI technologies, including including future iterations of models like ChatGPT and GPT-4. Like, you, yeah, it's talking about itself in the talking third person. Talking about itself in the third person, yeah. That is always a worry. Anyone in the pub who does that, you want to stay away from I them know, right? Themself. Okay, number five, there's only two more. Industry and investor reactions. So, yeah, the company's decisions in the coming weeks could influence investor confidence. But yeah. the last one was pretty much what we were just talking about. So, regulatory and ethical implications. The situation might attract regu- regulatory attention, especially considering the increasing scrutiny of AI technologies. It could also spark broader discussions on ethical leadership and corporate governance in tech companies, <laughs> says wow. ChatGPT. Yeah. Wow. But you know what? One of the other things they were considering, apparently on Sunday night, OpenAI, was merging with Anthropic. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So Anthropic make Claude. Yeah. So it's like a rival chatbot. But I found this out over the weekend, and I didn't know this, and I should have known this. <clears throat> hmm. The guy who set up Anthropic used to work at OpenAI, and he left because he didn't like the ethics. Right. <laughs> and he set up Claude to be an ethical AI in contrast to OpenAI. Right. And there, <laughs> and there was talk of them merging. Yeah. Mm-hmm, okay. And making that guy the CEO of both of them. Right. So it feels like, at a real basic level, it feels like um, an ethical versus commercialization argument to it me. It does, doesn't it? It does. That seems to be what's coming out, yeah. Yeah, it just, you know, and the idea of launching an open AI chat GPT store isn't like... Oh, it isn't like um, AI for everyone. It's AI for everyone for a price. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, the thing is, the whole AI thing might be over. Oh, I doubt it's going to be over. <laughs> but open AI might well be over. Yeah. And then it'll be a proper, like, fight to be the new leader, won't it? Yeah. Which, inevitably, Microsoft will win. Well, they've got money everywhere. They've got they've got everyone anyway. So they, yeah, they've definitely backed the winner somewhere along the line. <laughs> Absolutely. Well Absolutely. done, Microsoft. <laughs> Clever. I, I hate to say it. I hate Microsoft. <laughs> just just inherently built in, Paul. It's an inherent built in. Like thing. Microsoft. I know. I know. But you like you're of an age. I don't like I don't like Apple and Steve Jobs and all that weird cult. They can get lost. Yeah. I like Microsoft. Well, well, I think they may well be, as in, you know, I think that may well be the thing. Anyway, we're going to move on. Let's move on. From yeah. this. I'm going to keep an eye on, I'm going to keep on refreshing my Twitter feed <laughs> to see if anything else. To see if what we just talked about for 25 minutes is even relevant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, OpenAI rebranded as My Man Friday. <laughs> what? Cannibalism refers to the act of a species consuming its own kind. <laughs> That's that's quite funny. Anyway, here's a stink. Sting. One thing I meant to say to finish off on um, uh, OpenAI, which it won't be finished, but smash that into World Television Day. 
whoever gets the rights to make this, it's going to put a social network to shame. Yeah, it will. You know yeah. what I mean? What a drama. <laughs> yeah, it will. It's going to yeah. be, it'll inevitably, inevitably be Netflix. Uh, but, yeah, it will. And it could, um, you know what? It could, it could have like, um, depending on how it goes, it could have like a Terminator plot as well. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. <laughs> like, I mean, when do you start making it? Because <laughs> yeah. it takes a good 12 months. Yeah. Oh, it'll be, a, anyway. Anyway. Moving on, other news. Other news. Someone else has quit. Who? So, do you know we were doing, you were listening to my questionable audio last week from Stable Audio. Yes. When I was trying to make some tunes with AI. Yes. Well, there's a guy called Newton Rex, who is the VP of audio at Stability AI. Yep. And he's quit. Wow. Why do you think he's quit? Uh, I'm going to take a guess. Uh, because he disagreed with the company's position that using copyrighted material without permissions to train AI models is fair use. Sounds like you read that out from somewhere, Paul. I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so he's leftover ethics. Yeah. So he thinks that stable audio using um, commercial music is a bad idea. Um, so here you go. Stability AI recently argued that U.S. Copyright of- Office that using copyrighted works to train AI is fair use. He disagrees. Uh, and allowing AI to generate works that compete with original copyright materials like Dangerous. Um, Strange. The bonkers. Yeah, I mean, it brings us, brings us back to an old copyright argument, that, yeah. doesn't it? So me and me dodgy metal tunes. I mean, there was something to... we, didn't, we didn't actually predict that somebody, part of these models, say, oh, I don't know, it's all crazy. Yeah, well, I think maybe, you know, this is, the you know, part of an, a lot of people in this world might be sort of, What's the word I'm looking for? Idealists. Yeah. And then as soon as money gets involved, <laughs> that all goes out the window. <laughs> yeah. So off the back of that, here's another one. Meta, yeah. so who own Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, they have just dissolved, reportedly dissolved, their responsible AI team. Uh, What? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> so so it's dissolved its responsible AI team as it shifts focus and resources to developing more powerful generative AI models but without responsible so well the thing that's holding us back yeah, yeah. is that um, well we keep on having to like put guardrails in yeah. and make sure it's responsible and that just doesn't make us any money <laughs> so what I suggest is we get rid of the uh, responsible AI team and shift all that money to doing more powerful generative AI. Yeah? yeah. They're very posh, aren't they? Soft. Was that a recording for <laughs> Yeah, that was a re- that was a playback, a secret re- recording of the meeting. We've got an exclusive here. <laughs> yeah, exclusive, because yeah. that's how they all talk. Hey, yeah. I, 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 I. That's how they all talk. <laughs> why are they why are they posh British people? Don't I don't know. All right, okay. I don't know. Cle- yeah. doesn't Clegg work for them? Oh, yeah? You're right, he, he does. does. Yeah, so he maybe does. it was that, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Cleggy was there going. Aye, 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 aye. So, <laughs> so uh, there's loads of points, but the last point is meta risks falling behind industry peers who maintain strong, responsible AI teams and frameworks to guide development. This could hurt public trust. And I think that is what everyone's banking on, isn't it? Is like, would you not use something because it's not responsible, or if it enabled you to have an edge, would you just use it? Well, crikey. Yeah, I know, but that's proper Pandora's box, isn't it? I yeah, mean... but I think, I think that's the gamble that people are taking, though, isn't it? Because they're oh going, well, if we, if, if we put in loads of guardrails, then someone else won't, and they'll use their model, not ours. Yeah. I mean, that's, the, that's the argument they were making about China, Korea... All the rest of it on, yeah. a, on a on a politics level, so, so they just yeah. yeah. I mean, it was discussed quite heavily in that um, in the book we talked about. We did talk about the book, didn't we? Which um, book? Suleiman. Oh, uh, Suleiman's book, The yeah. Coming Wave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Talked a lot about that. Yeah, look how quickly it's happening. He also predicted that as well. I, I am getting um, slightly paranoid sat here. I must admit. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure if you look into any industry, you'll see stuff that terrifies you. Yeah. But because you're not in it every day, you know, mm. you're just like, oh, fine, you know, whatever. Mm. 
Okay, going to move on to a story you brought to us, Paul. Yes. Copyright again. Uh, yeah, it's copyright again. So this is to do with uh, a company called Insight Face. And Insight Face uh, create a technology that lets you uh, swap faces using AI. Yeah. And there's lots of other tools built on top of Insight Face as the underlying yep. technology. Yeah. And there's a guy called, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Olivio, oh, I can't say I his name. I think it's Okay, not, let's say that. Yeah. Um, so a YouTuber called Olivio Saracas, who's mainly like educational. He doesn't sell any products as far no. as I know. No. Um, so he had a load of videos, copyright strikes, and taken off YouTube because Insight Face didn't want their technology being shown on it. Is that right? That's correct. But but the the strange thing about it is, is the model itself was open source. Which yeah. means you're free to use it. So the, a free to use model with the MIT Creative Commons That's license. Right, yeah. Is That's that right, correct? Yeah. 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 So there That's are a few right, of yeah. those versions of that license, aren't there? Which are sort of you know here, here, go use it. Do do what you go create people. It's a great thing. Yeah. Um, and then in the, like you said, in the strangest of moves, they stopped people educating people about how to use their free to use model. I don't get I know. It. I, it's I don't so know if they, weird. I mean, didn't he? He didn't he win that battle in the end because I know he yes. reached out to him directly. Yeah, he did reach out to him directly, and he kind of he did uh, a video which was not in its usual style. It was a very rushed sort of video where he was um, telling people what had happened, and him and the community then piled on a load of pressure. Quite rightly, in my opinion, yeah. Because if yeah. you've got an open source model, it's an open source model. <laughs> You know, and yeah. um, I haven't actually watched the video, but looking at the thumbnail um, <laughs> and the description of the video, it says we won. And I watched yeah. the first like minute of it and it's like, oh, well, well done you. That, you know, yeah, quite absolutely. Right. I mean, I wonder what happened there. Do you think think somebody was employed and didn't realize it was an open source license and just went off on one? <laughs> I think right? it, I know it's, it's like so if we're taking normal creative uh sorry uh fair use policy or it, basically if you if you're using an open source model and you're constantly going this is rubbish i wouldn't touch this with a barge pole these people are corrupt if you're doing that then i can see why you'd want the content taken down and i think you've yes. got a valid reason for it yeah you know um but this reminds me of so when we started doing our old stuff we mainly did computer game trailers Right. Yeah. This was like in a time before you could record your games on the console. Yeah. And uh, as YouTube hit, all the computer games companies spent a fortune taking down gameplay videos. Yeah. Because they hated everyone and like, no, this is copyright material. This is our copyright. Yeah. And then they suddenly realized that loads of people were watching them and it meant they sold more games. <laughs> yeah. So, so then they went, all right. Let's do that. And then everyone started playing games and like making a fortune on YouTube, but also selling a load of games. Yeah, now it's a multi-billion dollar industry, isn't it? Absolutely. I Absolutely. mean, just the game reviewing itself, not the games, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to remember his name. Dan TDM yeah. was like an influencer that my kid absolutely loved. Yeah. And, you know, he used to play Minecraft, but then loads of other games. And I'm sure it's the reason why I've spent so much on games is Dan TDM. Right. <laughs> you know, but then also Dan makes, makes made, don't know if he still does, uh, made a fortune doing that. Yeah. As well. You yeah. know, win-win. It's like yeah. free advertising, isn't it? From Absolutely, you know. yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's a similar thing because I, I worry. I, I've done a couple of tutorials on how to use different pieces of software and whether they're any good or not. Yeah. And it didn't even cross my mind that I might be breaching the copyright. No. Which is bad, really. Yeah, but yeah, but that's just, that's a really strange one. Interesting, yeah. though. <laughs> so there's another slight aside on this, on the old um, uh, copyright thing. So when, and it's links back to GPTs. So the guy who does AI Explained, uh, a quality YouTube channel, if you want to have yep. a look, no yep. way affiliated, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Um, he was explaining how you Wait, create... Wait, didn't G say it. What? Link oh, link in, in the description. Yeah. yeah, we haven't said that at all. Links to everything we've talked about will be in the description. <laughs> yeah. Everything, always. Yeah. <clears throat> always. Maybe you don't need to say that. Maybe that's just like oh, understood. Fun, though, I like it. But yeah. anyway, okay. Link in yeah. the description, yeah. 
So, um, what was I saying? Yes, so he did a video last week. It's only last week. I can't wrap my head around it. No, it feels week. feels so long ago, all of that. It's like, ah. I know. Oh, GPTs, what are they? Are oh, they dead now? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he was doing a video where he built his own GPT. And as part of him doing this video, he just uploaded an entire book to chat GPT and then dismissed it as, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to do this, but copyright's not a thing anymore. And then he carried on. Wow. Yeah. He just carried on. I was like, you just uploaded an entire book to something you're going to potentially monetize. He's probably not going to do that. No. He's just demonstrating how it works. But but yeah, wow. I was like, and he, and he I don't know, I, I don't know much about him, but he sounds like a very well-spoken, well-rounded individual. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, copyright's not a thing anymore, is it? Copyright's yeah, not a thing anymore. Yeah. I, I know. I do not respect your copyright law. I know. What's that, what's that weird thing with citizens who live outside <laughs> the law or some nonsense? It oh, feels like that. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it does. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't... I will not be judged under commercial law. <laughs> yeah. I'm living by common law. Common law. Planet, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Planet Billington. <laughs> and on Planet Billington, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't get me started on that, Paul. That's, no. a, that's a rocky road for me, that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, back to Meta. Okay. The guys who just disbanded their responsible AI team. <laughs> um, so they've just announced a new thing called Emu. You can't use it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a link in the description to their examples of this. Yeah. And um, we've talked about and probably wasted a lot of time trying to wrangle generative images. Yes. To be exactly what we want them to be. Yes. It's the, and then that's we might... the challenge, isn't it? We, yeah. we tend to come at that from um, a professional perspective, don't we? I think it's inbuilt. Yeah. It's like, okay, I, I, can I make some useful images now in a professional capacity? Only, you know, demoing it and seeing what's possible. And it, yeah, and you, it's you kind of can, but kind of though. You can't yeah. just go. You know, the third button down on yeah. that jacket. Can we make it pink? Yeah. Can, can, we, seem... um, can we do a computer keyboard that hasn't got 3,000 keys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you put that into your prompt, you suddenly get an image of a hippo and you're like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd the hippo come from? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want yeah. a hippo. It looks cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's not exactly what I'm after. No, so, And it also goes a bit wild sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did have a niece and nephew around. Um I was talking about it and I said, oh, you can do whatever you want, you know, kind of thing. And then uh, she went, oh, can I be a mermaid? And I went, yes, of course you can. Yeah. And I asked um, one of the stable diffusion models to generate me a picture of um, a mermaid with the intention of doing the face swap thing that we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know, yeah. and of course... Mermaids are half naked, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not safe for work, Paul. Yes, I forgot to Not, add that yeah. in the negative prompts. <laughs> they should have so, a not safe for family. Yeah, we had the whole family stood round the computer waiting with bated breath on this and I was like, Oh no, wait, stop. <laughs> Hands all over the monitor. Gonna... <laughs> all right, so you you're working in AI now, Paul. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, oh anyway, dear. Be warned, anyway. everyone, if you try. There you yeah. go. But anyway, Emu, so they, they've they got this for video, so obviously it's for stills as well. But so say you generate an image that you like, and I think the example they use uh, is a rabbit. So they've generated this rabbit, this cartoon rabbit, and then they can add the prompt playing a multicolored trumpet, and it does it, or skiing, and then it's the same rabbit skiing or underwater, and it's the same rabbit underwater. So you can, like, dictate location, costume, actions with a consistent character, which feels kind of game-changing to me, that, because trying to wrangle a diffusion model to do that is, I find, anyway. No, it's, no, it's difficult, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's difficult. nigh on impossible. Yeah, there are all sorts of hacks and cheat, cheaty ways of doing it, but, yeah. You know. But it only works within a certain set of parameters, doesn't it? It's not yes. like a a global thing. So you'd be able to do a certain set of things. But yeah. anyway, uh, that says to me that, you know, I, you mentioned this just before we started recording, Paul, mm -hmm. is that things that will threaten our old industry if it still exists 
but at least threatens the old skill sets. Yeah. Or the old crafts are around the corner. Yeah, very close now, I think. Very yeah. Very close. So maybe six months off. Yeah. M- maybe less. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, open AI, open AI has pretty much eclipsed everything that's happened in the past week. Yeah. Um, so I've got one more news story, which is kind of a demo. You can't really use it, but it's going back to our music thing. And in contrast to last week's stable uh, audio demonstration, yeah, Google which is very good mind. at doing um, fresh bands in a rehearsal room. <laughs> Hon- honky tonk house, <laughs> I think was your phrase, Paul. <laughs> yeah, honky tonk house. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Google DeepMind have teamed up with YouTube. Uh, there's some copyright stuff in this. Anyway, I'm going to go to a sting and then we'll have a look at it when we come back. Here we go. Okay. And when I said we'll have a look at it, I meant listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's have a because listen. Because that's, yeah, let's have a listen. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so uh, DeepMind uh, released this thing called Transforming the Future of Music Creation. They've got a new model, so it's called Lyra, L-Y-R-I-A. Uh, you can search it up, or the link will be in the description. Like Lyria, 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 Ly- Ly- Lyria, Lyria. Yeah, yeah oh. maybe. And a, um, an advanced generative AI model for creating high-quality vocal and instrumental music, okay. built by Google Mind, and gives people more control over style and performance. There's this thing called Dream Track, so. This ties in with our copyright thing as well, but this is an experiment on YouTube Shorts that uses Lyra, Lyria, oh, uses know, it, it. Yeah. uses the model, let's say the model for now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the model. uses the model to generate 30-second soundtracks with lyrics, backing tracks, and AI-generated vocals mimicking popular artists like Charlie Puth, don't know if that's a, don't know if that's a person, <laughs> and is that a person? You're in music? Yes. You've heard? <clears throat> yeah, okay. And T-Pain, I've heard of. Right, yeah. Uh, it's designed to explore new ways new ways for artists to correct, connect with fans. The third one is Music AI Tools, a suite of go- tools Google's developing to help artists, songwriters, and producers enhance their creative process. So you'll be able to transform audio between styles and instruments. So, for example, you could hum something and then turn it into a trumpet. Amazing. If you wanted to. I want to have a listen. That. Yeah. Do you want to have a listen? I won't play their um, promo video because it's far too long. Right. So I'm just going to come straight to a dream track. Okay. So this is for YouTube's shorts. And I think the idea is, is you create a short and it's meant to be, I think, you know, on TikTok where you can like choose the tune to go with it. Like on Instagram stories, you can choose a tune to go with your post. I think they're taking this a step further. I think the idea is to go with a YouTube short. You generate a tune from your favorite artist, but ties into the feeling of your shorts. Okay. So there's a bit in text here, which I'll have to read out, but then I'll let it play. So I'll describe it and then it'll play. Right. So this is a dream track audio sample, uh, AI generated voice in the style of the artist, Charlie Puth. Here we go. So it's, he's typing a ballad about how opposites attract upbeat acoustic. Baby, we've got nothing in common. But I know that I'm what you've been wanting for so long now. What? That's not bad, is it? Crikey. <laughs> Outrageous. So, here's another one. So this is T-Pain. So this is one they've done with T-Pain. You ready? And I'll read it out again at the beginning and try to finish reading it before the music starts. Ready? A sunny morning in Florida, R&B, T-Pain. Wow. It's pretty insta- <clears throat> outstanding, that, isn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> it's really outstanding. You know, Jake uh, mentioned this, our uh, web developer, not, not yeah. so long ago. He was talking about the future of music, as in... You you would uh, possibly not listen to tracks and just type in what you want to listen to. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? Yeah, it it is. I, see, I don't know. I don't know what. Ages ago, this is ages ago, and you might you're into football. Yeah, you know. But the idea of player cam. 
Yeah. <laughs> so the idea that you can pick your own player and follow them on the pitch. Yeah. And in terms of this, in terms of the, they tried it on Wimbledon as well, like pick your own angle. Right. Yeah. So you know, it was red BBC red button stuff. That's yeah. how old this is. <laughs> but no one did it. They just wanted to have it presented to them. Yeah, we used to I, watch uh, player cam quite a lot. To be honest, we're disappointed. Did you? When it went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, everyone. Football, twenty seconds. It's all right. Uh, we it used to be uh, United fans, and we used to enjoy watching Roy Keane get angry at absolutely everything. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. All right, yeah. So, I, I, a lot of the time, though, I think people more people want to be passive consumers of other people's stuff as opposed to generating their own entertainment. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just I, started staring out the window, lost in thought yeah. about what you just said. Just not a very good <laughs> podcast, that, is it? <laughs> no. mm. well, Paul, let's say, it's all right, Paul. Soon enough, we'll just be able to hook up something and AI will read your mind. Yeah. And then it'll all make sense. You won't, even have to, you won't even have to engage your mouth. It'll oh, that'd be, be great. We'll have like a voiceover that announces thoughts, like a narration. <laughs> that. That is terrifying because, <laughs> like, you need a filter, don't you? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, this is this is uh, a bit of a longer video, but this is the idea of um, just using the microphone. I've seen a couple of these things knocking about, but this is part of YouTube's Music AI Incubator, and this is just like thinking of a tune, uh, maybe humming it into a microphone, but then creating an entire tune out of it. I'm just going to play this. And this is from Lewis Bell, who's a producer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. And he builds a track from just a hum. He's written saxophone solo. I think each one of those instruments, he's just... Yeah, that's pretty cool. I can imagine that inside a, a digital audio <clears throat> workstation. That would be pretty cool. I have seen like a standalone thing that's meant to do that, but convert it to MIDI as opposed to... Yeah, well, Ab a... Ableton does that natively, actually. Yeah. That's been built in for a while. Do you want to hear some of the instruments on its own? Because I know it's kind of difficult within yeah. a tune. Yeah, yeah. So no. So, okay... Beatboxing. That's not me, by the way. <laughs> there you go. It's pretty good. It's getting really, really close. Uh, I mean, I know it isn't like moved on from last week. But only yeah. in our, our context, but that is really good, actually. Here's another one. Orchestral score, which I find pretty phenomenal, actually, yeah. this one. John Williams Brilliant. is going to be out of a job. You know what? I'd love what I'd love that as like, like a, an app at home attaching yeah. to me hi-fi system. You know, like I'm always going around the house whistling or humming or something. But you could have like a whole ensemble joining in with you. That'd just be that amazing fun. <laughs> Ultimate ego trip. Yeah, <laughs> drums, yeah. dude. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I'm just having a quick open AI check. No, oh, yeah. Anything uh, happened? Uh, no. All right. <laughs> That was, oh, it's a shame. Just lots of questionable pictures. No. <laughs> right, yeah. and uh, last one, Paul. Yeah. Is, uh, so this is MIDI keyboard chords to vocal. So this is like the opposite way around. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but I don't think this, you know, this isn't a VST, this isn't an instrument. Mm -hmm. So here you go.
Not sure you about don't... that one. Yeah, I really like that, me. But yeah, but I mean, I don't understand because there are there are sample vocal libraries where you can just play that directly. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, because the other, the thing about the other two is you're just using your voice. Yeah. Whereas the other one requires some musical ability. Yeah. I mean, they exist, you know? I mean, you can play, yeah. a, a, like, hundreds of voices, these huge choirs, a, a, a quite expensive sample libraries, but you can literally play them. Yeah. So uh, do you want another yeah. downside of all this? No, go on. So the, we talked about this maybe four or five weeks ago. Okay. This thing called Synth ID. Oh, yeah. Which was about putting little markers into yeah. AI-generated pictures. Yeah. Well, any content published with our Lyra, 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 Lyra model will be watermarked with Synth ID. Right. <clears throat> it's going to take everybody about two minutes to get around that. Yeah. Oh, you'd hope so, because then essentially, <laughs> I mean, if copyright was still a thing, this is Synth ID is great. <laughs> yeah. As in, you know. Are we, are we going with that now? Have we moved on to copyright doesn't exist? I don't know. I, don't, I keep on saying <laughs> it's dead, copyright's dead. But then that means... Loads of industries are dead. Yeah, <laughs> that I, you know that I've relied on. Please um, refer to our earlier discussions. <laughs> well, let's just put it as a concept. It's outdated. Mm, okay, it needs a rethink. Yeah, okay, definitely needs a rethink. So anyway, that is Google DeepMind and YouTube doing loads of interesting stuff in audio. And now that the stable audio guys quit, maybe that's the place to look. The Lyra model yeah. or the Lyria model is not out for like, as far as I can tell, for. Uh, public consumption yet. Okay. And they're doing little tests with people, but I'd say keep an eye out for that. Yeah. I do want to have a Hot play. Names. Yeah. Cool. Right, I'm going to go to a Sting now. Sting. There is loads There is loads more AI news, but not anything worth talking about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> bye. Not bye, Sting. <laughs> Right then, um, we touched on this last week, um, but we've decided to kind of go all in on pay what you feel, haven't we? We have. I was doing a bit more digging on it. Apparently people call it pay what you want. Okay, pay what you want then. Yeah, I P -W -Y -W, did wonder why was, uh... w, but I did yeah. check. PWYW.com's gone. Right. So we, can't, we haven't got that one. Aww. So if you want that, you'll have to buy it off someone else. Um, P W Y W G P T S. <laughs> Just checking now. <laughs> no, um, but it, it's a weird from like putting a business head on. It's it's weird. Pay what you feel. Yeah, because you got no way of predicting no. your income. No, no I've got a feeling all. though that we might just be able to do that. Because I think there's going to be a percentage. Yeah, there'll be a percentage of people. Yeah. Who, yeah. You know, who'll pay a, some money. Yeah, and a percentage amounts and things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's not madness in this. No. It was, sorry. So we were looking around. I said we said this before, but looking around. In fact, I'm going to relate this differently. Okay. Right? So literally just what we've been talking about before. Yeah. Is... If one thing AI is doing for people is pushing forward this concept, it should be free. Yeah. And you can just you can just do this stuff. Yeah. You know, it's there. It's a service. You just do it. Yeah. And you don't pay for it. Democratization of yeah. knowledge yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, we have talked about it. It's a, I don't want to go too complicated in it, but that was the promise of the early internet, right? Yeah. But the, you know, the idea, here's a concept, of paying for a Google search. Yeah. It's insane, isn't it? Yeah. And no one would ever think you pay for a Google search. No, no. But You pay to be know, on it. it. <laughs> on the results. What do you mean? You pay to be what on the mean? results. Yeah. yeah. You pay to be on the results, but you as a, like, a, you know, if you're searching for something, mm -hmm. would you consider paying one pound per search? No. Not a chance. No. You know, weirdly though, but every search probably costs Google, you know, X amount of money. Oh, definitely, yeah. Wow, I mean, I don't yeah. know how much it costs to run those huge server farms. I mean, they do cache, store in, in memory the entire yeah. internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, which the is entire which... useful internet, I should say. But yeah, and some of the unuseful yeah. internet. We generated enough of that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the pay what you feel model, it kind of gets you out of what I'd say is a traditional sales funnel where ultimately you want people to part with money and you came to a conclusion that this was a good idea based on like a general ill feeling towards the kind of um quite obvious sales funnel model yeah in in, in the music creator world um a couple of years ago probably more than a couple of years ago now if you there are big players on on sample sites you know stuff like that and kind of everybody's shifted towards a subscription model. Yeah. So you pay a, sub- a monthly subscription and you get a certain amount of, I'll call them tokens, is the usual way it's done. And then you can yeah. download against those tokens. And when you run out, you kind of have to wait wait till next month, you know, yeah, to get samples and stuff like that, which I think for some people is inhibitive. And that doesn't really fit with the music creator universe. So we've decided, and like you say, it might might be the craziest business decision in the world to be somewhat ethical and hopefully um, that will stand us in good stead. And rather than having thousands and thousands of samples and you kind of feel like when you've got a subscription, you, you know, you go and download loads of samples because you're paying for them. Yeah, um, which actually brings in some barriers to when you're producing music because you can have too many. You're kind of blinded by the options. Blinded by the options, exactly that. Yeah. So uh, in this way, it's kind of you can go and get just the samples that you need, you know, yeah. and pay what you want for them. I, yeah. I love it because it's it, it doesn't make business sense, <laughs> which is why I shouldn't love it. But I really, I do, I do love it because. It's like if if something's genuinely valuable, and the yeah. the, the point being, so yeah. if we do get people who are using this yeah. and relying on it, we won't be able to carry on unless they pay yeah. what they feel. Oh, it feels very techy now. I mean, we're at, we're right out there now. I mean, communities just, community building, Paul. Community building, yeah. And we can yeah. we can do one of them blitz scaling things, you know, because we're not concerned yeah. about making money. <laughs> we did a little bit of research this morning, yes. um, or rather Jake has, because he's talking. We're talking to Jake, a uh, web developer, talking about how we implement this. Yeah, and so you know when you go to a shopping cart, you obviously know this. Um, you know you have a checkout experience, and some sites are better than others. Yeah, you know you put your card details. And we have in. been working on refining a checkout experience, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But there's some kind of off the shelf things that you can embed in your site. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, people provide payment options and for that service, they take a percentage of your sales, yep. which is fair enough because, you know, I mean, eventually we want to build our own, but, it's, yep. you know, it's a big job. Um, and it turns out there's only, uh, from our initial research, it seems like there's only one, this is a problem for us, who can do a pay what you feel transaction, but even if that transaction is zero, so they decide they're going to pay nothing, yeah, we still we will still be charged for the transaction. Yep. <laughs> so there you go, and, that, <laughs> and that's between twenty or thirty p. Okay. So every time someone decides to pay nothing, it costs us. Yep. Feels like it's the Beastie Boys all over again. Doesn't it? <laughs> it feels uh, like the craziest thing going. Let's go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but there is there is one there is one who only just take a percentage, right? And it's uh, the buy me a coffee people. Yeah. Okay. So they uh, they uh, take a percentage of nothing. Yeah. Right. Well if you don't well, if you don't buy them a coffee, if you don't buy us a coffee, there's nothing happened. Yeah, there we go. So So it must be working for them. Yeah. And and the other one he mentioned, Jake mentioned, was Bandcamp, although mm. I don't know much about that myself. It takes well, there's a lot going on there. I think that might even warrant uh, a certainly a, a segment of an episode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll put we'll put that on the list. But being as we're talking in the pay 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 what you feel universe, that might be a good topic to to um, yeah talk about. Oh, we we've uh, we talked about. Um, well, we had a meeting with someone from Reddit yesterday, which is oh yeah, we about did the launch. Yeah, yeah, we should talk about that. Actually, we should. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, people will be familiar with seeing adverts on Google. Yeah. 
And really briefly, the way that works is you tell Google what audience you get, want to get in front of. Yeah. They use their knowledge about everybody to put your advert in front of those people. Yeah. But there's like an advertising slot at the top of somebody's feed. Yes. And that maybe loads of people want to be in. Like, I want to be in that slot. Yeah. Um, and then you bid for how much it costs to be in that slot, right? Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, and, it's, and a, it's an auction that takes place in fractions of a second. Yeah. Yeah. The way you do that is you sort of preload your bid of, of how much you're prepared to pay on a on a cost per click basis. Yeah. And then Google analyzes who's prepared to pay what and looks at all the criteria that you've put in. And if you're the winning bid, you come top. And that's an automated process, isn't it? That's an algorithm. Yeah. That's not Sheila sat there looking at it, no. deciding who decides to be on it. <laughs> Don't know why, Sheila. <laughs> no, anyway. don't. Come on, Sheila. I'm having a <laughs> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put it up in a minute. God. <laughs> but, and it's different for different industries, isn't it? So if you're selling insurance, yes, which is a very, uh, very oft searched word, yes, um, then you're going to be paying a fortune. But then yeah. if you're wanting to sell your sort of all in one complete horseshoe throwing guide, yep. I think that'll be quite cheap. Yeah. You don't know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Reddit kind of works in the same way. It does. Yeah. So they have they have a system inside Reddit where you can do a thing called a promoted post, but it's a lot more it's a lot more transparent about what's going on really. It isn't is it? more transparent and also the thing about advertising on, on Reddit is the the communities of the people that we want to get in front of exist and you can be a part of. It's not as nebulous yeah. as Google, you know, so it's a little a little bit more targeted. It comes with some risk because Reddit can be a savage place. <laughs> yeah. You know. Honest, Paul, an honest, an it's honest, an honest place. place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that feels really good for us. And the other thing I thought was really good to Reddit's credit is uh, when we reached out to them, we, we had a meeting with somebody. And yeah. if you've ever tried to place ads on Google... It's complex. It can be a little bit impenetrable, um, but yeah. to Reddit's credit, they have will be assigned an account manager um, who can help us with it. So that's great. Yeah, and it, but it also means that they'll, you know, every time we want to do a campaign, they'll have a think about it for us. They'll yeah. look at communities, and I should also say on Reddit as well, there's communities which don't allow advertising. Yes, correct. So yeah. the only way we're going to get in front of those is to be on those boards and, and contributing. Part, yeah, yeah, on those boards and be a part of that community, which is a great yeah. thing for a business, I think, because we will yeah. be in touch with them. We, we one can thing, properly listen to consumers, you know. There's, there's one thing I felt a little bit uncomfortable about, but I think it does tie into the whole Reddit theory Yeah, or Reddit world, is that... so. The post, the promoted post you put out, cannot be from a faceless company. You yeah, know, which which is good, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah, it makes you think in a different way. Definitely makes us think different to the old world. Bloody hell. Yeah. Um. So I kind of liked that. Um. Yeah. It does mean that we're going to have to create a new Reddit user. Yes. Because I don't think they want to see a promoted post from Martin underscore Rilo. Don't What's know. yours? What's your handle? Mine's dwindling gravitas. <laughs> you did ask of course it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> there are any sci-fi fans out there they'll know what i'm on about but wow wow okay <laughs> so we're, we're going to be doing that this week as well talking about doing a reddit advertising strategy yeah um i think looking at the time that we've been going paul i think we're going to leave it there oh crikey I did, yeah I did, we've I'd, gone I'd, hour, over an hour yeah yeah. I did want to have an on-air Barney about building online u uh, audiences. Did you? I did. But oh, we can wow. do that another time. What a shame. You know. well, it bye. Will, <laughs> <laughs> it will still be there. Wait there, before you go, I'm just going to refresh <laughs> right. Twitter once oh, more. Oh, yeah. Okay, go Just on. to see if the... Ooh. Twitter? What's Twitter? Twitter, sorry, X. <laughs> open AI. Uh, open AI update as yeah. of nine seconds ago. Yeah. Open AI in intense discussions to quell potential staff mutiny. Ooh. I bet they are. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> no, don't go. No. We'll give you extra, so, extra days holiday. 
<laughs> yeah, you get free free GPT credits. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, um, we'll see you next week or not, depending what happens yeah. with uh, OpenAI. Yeah. So on that note, I'm going to play a string. Bye, Paul. Bye.